a reading from the Acts of the Apostles, as the crippled man who had been cured clung to Peter and John, all the people hurried in amazement towards them in the portico called Solomon's Portico. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, You children of Israel, why are you amazed at this, and why do you look so intently at us, as if we made him walk by our own power or piety? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are a witness. And by faith in his name, this man whom you see and know, his name was made strong. And the faith that comes through all has been given to him, this perfect hell, in the presence of all of you. Now I know, brethren, that you acted out of ignorance just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he announced beforehand through the mouths of all the prophets. And that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away, that the Lord may grant you times of refreshment and send you the Christ already appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the times of universal restoration, of which God spoke through the mouth of his holy prophets from of old. For Moses said, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you, from among your own kin, to him you shall listen in all that he may say to you. Everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be cut off from the people. Moreover, all the prophets who spoke from Samuel and those afterwards also announced these days. You are the people, the prophets, and the covenant that God made with your ancestors when he said to Abraham, In your offspring all the families of the earth shall be blessed. For you first God raised up his servant and sent him to bless you by turning each of you from your evil ways. Verbum Domini. Alleluia. O Lord our God, how glorious is your name above all the earth. What is man that you should be mindful of him? Or the son of man that you should care for him? You have made him little less than the angels and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him rule over the works of your hands, putting all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, yes, from the, and the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fishes of the sea, whatever swims the path of the seas. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia. Dominos Rabiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Lucum. The disciples recounted what had taken place along the way and how they'd come to recognize him in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. And he said to them, why are you troubled? Why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of big fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He then said to them, These are the, my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms might be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, 
and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, so we now are uh, moving on to Divine Mercy Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter where we have John's depiction of what happened on Easter Sunday night. This is the Luke version. And what is similar in both is that they, Jesus coming and saying, Peace be with you. See, Jesus is all about peace. And peace comes from the forgiveness of our sins, knowing that our sins are forgiven. Regardless of whether we are in turmoil, regardless of whether we have joy in our lives, peace comes through Christ's mercy. And this is what Jesus prophesied, right? We have uh, 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 Christ unfolding scripture for all of the disciples, just as Peter was unfolding scripture, the prophets, the law, right? Moses, Samuel, uh, Abraham. Uh, uh, letting the people know that this truly was the Christ prophesied all throughout the Old Testament that you put to death and that you are to repent and your sins will be forgiven and you will have peace. Right? This is what we hear Peter proclaiming after Pentecost. Jesus now is prophesying, right? Prophesying this, that uh, repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. And indeed, this is the reality, my brothers and sisters in Christ. So my question is, why are we not every single day, priests, bishops, the Pope, proclaiming to the nations, proclaiming to the world, repent, repent, Repent and your sins will be forgiven. Stop murdering. Stop murdering our pre-born children. Stop immersing yourself in sexual immorality. Stop mutilating your bodies. Stop attacking marriage and family. Repent and your sins will be forgiven and you will receive the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We see there's no peace in the world. War or no war, there's no peace in the world. The world is angry. The world is upset. The world is anxious. The world has no peace. And you can see those who are most steeped in sin are the ones who are lacking the greatest peace. They are most, the greatest manifestations of those who lack peace are those who are immersed in, in, in sinfulness. And so, my brothers and sisters of Christ, peace comes from Jesus. Peace comes from the forgiveness of our sins, which comes from Jesus. All we need to do is repent. This is what we should be proclaiming to the world, my brothers and sisters of Christ. Peter proclaims it after Pentecost. Jesus says it should be proclaimed. It will be proclaimed. We need to proclaim it, my brothers and sisters of Christ. So peace be with you. And remember, we as Catholics understand that this repentance, this conversion, this desire to have our sins forgiven is a daily, ongoing process. We just can't say, oh, well, Lord, forgive me my sins, I repent. And then go back to the way we were before. That our sins are forgiven once, now, forever. That is ridiculous. It makes no sense. Peace is ongoing. Repentance of sin should be ongoing. Holding our sins up to the light of day that Jesus may forgive us our sins should be ongoing. So we may be filled with the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ every moment of the day, every single day of our lives, until indeed we are with him for all eternity in heaven, the fulfillment of peace that he promises here on earth. Let us now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy.